It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A little known but influential network of conservative think tanks is holding its annual meeting this week. According to an article published in the Guardian newspaper, the state policy network has developed a plan to defund and defang public sector unions with the aim of weakening progressive candidates' fundraising abilities. The state policy network is 63 conservative state think tanks in all 50 U.S. states. The SPN fundraising letter that was sent to supporters in April of last year outlines that they want to raise $8 million, and the plan they have uh, states that and I am quoting here, once in a lifetime chance to reverse the failed policies of the American left. We are primed right now to deliver the mortal blow to permanently break its stronghold on our society, it states. Joining us to discuss this recent revelation is Larry Cohen. Larry is former president of the Communication Workers of America and chair of Our Revolution, the group that Bernie Sanders founded last year. Thanks for joining us today, Larry. Pleasure. So, Larry, SPN, uh, its fundraising letter, that I mentioned and quoted from in the intro, highlights the success that the Republicans had in rolling back public sector unions in Wisconsin back in 2011 under Governor Scott Walker. Remind us what happened in Wisconsin and about the consequences of this type of legislation that's now taking a stronghold in many states. Well, as designed, it is uh, destroying the rights of public workers. Uh, as you said, in states like uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, and earlier this year in Iowa, where bargaining rights were stripped from tens of thousands of public employees there, teachers, state employees, uh, local government employees. So, you know, their goal is to eliminate collective bargaining everywhere. So uh, the neoliberal agenda is all you need is management and markets. Uh, in fact, they want to get rid of the public sector itself as much as they can. And in the meantime, uh, as you said, they also want to limit the ability of public sector unions uh, to collect uh, uh, dues from their members, uh, dues that are then used to support uh, collective bargaining as well as progressive legislation, uh, not actually candidates. Candidate money is raised separately. And Larry, what is the specific uh, piece of legislation that was so prohibitive for unions in, in Wisconsin? Well, the results in Wisconsin were that there was a huge drop in union membership because they stripped away the rights of unions to bargain. So, uh, and also membership is totally voluntary, even though there's an obligation to bargain for members and non-members. So, and, and on top of that, uh, they forced unions to reapply for their collective bargaining rights and then to uh, enter into regular elections as to whether or not uh, they would be the bargaining agent. And in those elections, a majority of the bargaining unit, not just the majority of those voting, has to vote for the union or the union has no collective bargaining. The workers have no collective bargaining rights. So this combination of things uh, has really resulted in uh, a huge drop in uh, the rights of, of public workers in Wisconsin, and as I said, now this year in Iowa, uh, previously also in Indiana, Michigan, uh, this is all by design because the SPN members, which are these so-called uh, think less tanks when it comes to workers uh, and think more about management tanks, um, you know, are everywhere. They're well funded by groups like the Koch brothers, and their design is to make sure that workers have no rights and, and that there's no organized opposition to their agenda, not just in terms of public workers, but in terms of their entire agenda, uh, to have markets determine everything, to gut the public sector, and uh, that the oligarchy will only get stronger, the, the management and the billionaires in this country. Right. So um, you're talking specifically about the right to work legislation, I assume, here. No, not just right to work. So in Wisconsin, 
Uh, there was separate legislation stripping away bargaining rights from public workers, uh, as well as right to work. Uh, but they stripped away not only the bargaining rights, what could be negotiated, but also collective bargaining itself from uh, public workers across Wisconsin. And that was then copied in many states, even in New Jersey, uh, right wing Republican Governor Christie uh, got the Democratic legislature to pass legislation uh, stripping away bargaining on health care. This is spread all over the country. The Republican Party now, uh, the party itself, uh, in its platform, aims at stripping away bargaining rights from workers of all types across the country, public and private. Right. And you mentioned Indiana, Michigan, West Virginia. Um, so is it uh, correct that they are getting a stronghold uh, in terms of uh, the various states that they are uh, trying to work in? And how successful are they? Well, where they have taken over, meaning the state legislature and the governor, uh, and in states that previously had bargaining rights, that's what they aim at. So they get partial victories in states like New Jersey, where they had the governor, but not the legislature, but they did achieve quite a bit. They get a total uh, running of the table in places like Iowa, Wisconsin, Indiana, and even Michigan. Now, um uh, one of their aimed or stated objectives uh, is the state solutions and national impact, and that's in quotes, uh, is one of their stated objectives. Um, are they able to achieve that? Well, they're only able to achieve it if people uh, sit back uh, and are passive. So really the key, what we're saying in our revolution is uh, all working class people, black, brown, and white, public and private sector, with a union or without, need to realize that when they destroy bargaining rights, destroy the rights of union members, uh, they then go after eliminating the minimum wage, uh, eliminating uh, all the rights uh, for workers in general. Over time, they're after getting rid of all overtime legislation. They would like to get rid of the 40 hour work week. Uh, so working class people need to realize this is not about public sector unions. It's about attack after attack on workers' rights and uh, a program that believes that when, you, that when the billionaires get even richer, uh, that's good for the country as a whole. So for all of us who believe that workers' rights are essential uh, in defending uh, everything that we believe in, our standard of living, our health care, our pensions, you have to stand up and fight back, not wait till they come for you. Right. Now, um, SPN isn't the only such conservative group working on a state level for national impact. The other major groups um, uh, you, you know about, obviously, we've talked about in the past with the uh, labor movement is, is of course, ALEC, um, the American Legislative Exchange Council, which was also a major force behind Wisconsin's public sector union fight in 2011. Uh, now, do progressive forces have anything equivalent fighting back uh, ALEC and SPN and such organizations? Uh, sure. There's groups like Institute for Policy Studies, uh, Economic Policy Institute, Center for Economic and Popular uh, Research, CEPR. I might have the name a little bit wrong. Center for Economic Policy Research, CEPR, yeah. yes. And who so, else? Yeah, I mean, we don't have billionaire funders. So it's very hard to match them when it's about dollars and then the dollars hiring researchers and lobbyists. So the only way to match them is a mass movement. Uh, that's why we started our revolution exactly a year ago and other groups that we collaborate with. But we have to say to people, um, we need permanent political uh, organizations and groups, uh, whether it's our revolution or allies, uh, that aren't just there for one election or one candidate or one issue, but link these issues together and fight uh, for uh, economic, racial, social, uh, environmental justice on an ongoing basis. So we're not starting over every time there's another fight. Right. And uh, how much uh, uh, are the unions uh, cognizant of this kind of organizations that are out there? And are they putting resources, time, and woman and manpower behind the fight back? 
Yes, most, most of the unions are doing that. Um, so, you know, we have to sort of concede that workers establish a union to deal with their employer in a workplace. And so they have certain rights in that workplace. So then you have to build uh, the notion of a political movement, particularly one that goes beyond unions. On top of that, uh, that's not automatic. It doesn't fall from the sky. But I would say we are seeing increased involvement in groups like our revolution uh, from uh, uh, organized unions uh, and their members. But that doesn't come automatically. You have to work at that. In a similar way, people who are in environmental groups or even civil rights groups don't automatically link up with you know, working class people in these working class fights. So the notion of building an overall political movement uh, that puts us on offense, not just defense, uh, remains a struggle in the United States compared to most other nations. Right. Now, Larry, um, when you look at uh, negotiations that are going on in terms of uh, trade negotiations, such as NAFTA, uh, other trade deals and so on, uh, corporations and groups like ALEC uh, and SPN and others, um, even if they're, you know, usually state repre uh, represented uh, organizations like SPN, um, they're still at the center of these kinds of discussions and negotiations or lobbying efforts and, and so on. But rarely do you hear from civil society organizations in these kinds of very important, uh, high-level, uh, you know, important macro-level um, uh, discussions and negotiations that are going on. Isn't it time that, uh, you know, movements like uh, our revolution actually uh, demand a venue at these kinds of uh, discussions as well? Yeah, so actually our revolution has been doing that uh, uh, at our founding a year ago, uh, stopping the Trans-Pacific Partnership with a focus particularly on the 30 or so Democrats who were likely to vote for it and, and moving several of them uh, before the whole thing collapsed because we had Republican support in the House, you know, minor, but 30 or 40 Republicans plus uh, 170 Democrats and it was clear that uh, President Obama could not pass it, so he let it go. And then uh, Donald Trump put the icing on the cake. But it wasn't Trump who killed the TPP. It was a mass movement. And that movement did have labor, environmentalists, immigrant rights groups, uh, very united student groups, uh, faith-based groups, very united across the country uh, in opposition. And it led to a victory. So yes, we've picked up with that same coalition uh, led by groups like Citizens Trade Campaign, Our Revolution, uh, many a big chunk of labor. Uh, we had, we've already had a series of demonstrations uh, about what the, quote, new NAFTA should look like, and uh, we're not sitting back. So, in fact, the Labor Day message, uh, which I have just signed off on for Our Revolution, asks people to sign to join. Over 100,000 Our Revolution members have already signed, uh, demanding that uh, the so-called new NAFTA not be yet another corporate trade deal and saying that, yes, I'll put my name down and I'm ready to fight in my congressional district to demand that uh, my member of Congress not go along with another corporate trade deal. Uh, as you said, hundreds of corporate lobbyists are inside the room uh, and groups like ours are on the outside demanding our rights. All right, Larry, I thank you so much uh, for joining us today and all the best for the Labor Day weekend to you. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.